So this is going to be part 3 of a ransomware attack that happened against an AWS cloud environment and we're going to be investigating it. But first, if you haven't seen part 1 and part 2, definitely check them out because they give you the context you need to follow along within this investigation. I'll package them into a nice playlist and leave them in the link in the description below as well as in the pinned comment in this video. Definitely start with those videos then after watching them, come along and follow on in this video. Let's get right into it. Alright, so here in part 3 we have a couple of questions to answer. Let's take a look and dive right into it. So the very first question question is were any buckets deleted if so which ones let's hop into our query editor and continue using our amazon athena to query for what's happening here i'm just going to create a new query for this one steal that first query and then clean this up so we're looking for if any buckets were deleted so let's just look for uh let's take this out where event name is delete bucket this is basically the api call for bucket deletion within aws now again if you're not familiar with api calls you can easily just google like something like let's say you didn't know what the delete bucket api call was for aws so we could just like what is let's just do like a bucket deletion api call aws and there you have it you can just see delete bucket right there so i can easily help you identify these api calls when you're investigating within uh, aws so let's see and run this query all right so it seems like no bucket was deleted i guess that's a good thing uh, let's go back here now they said were objects taken from any buckets well i know that objects were taken from buckets so i would say yes to that just simply because we already did that in the last video we saw a ton of excel files and a particular csv file that was stolen from bucket and actually that should be get object if you run that query again yeah so this is about the same results and let's uh, adjust this view just to make it a lot more accessible there and if we scroll through right there we see a ton of get objects um, and we see all these different excel files that we're stolen from uh, this particular uh, bucket uh, that was uh, compromised so that answers the question. Yeah, there were a ton of objects taken from this particular S3 bucket here. I think we actually even documented that in the previous query here. So we see here, we have bucket and folder. It was not this bucket actually. So I think it was the O2 bucket, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was this bucket here. So simulation bucket O2, this let me just copy the, the bucket name here. So it was this bucket right here. So if we grab that and yeah, bucket data was exfiltrated from it's that I typically always like to collect the bucket ARN just in case. So I think I'm just going to grab that as well because I don't really know where they're leading us with this scenario. So I will just grab that bucket ARN, the full bucket ARN so that in case I need it for anything. I mean, you never really know. I just like getting the full ARN because you can get all the details from it. So let's just paste that in there. And yeah, that answers our second question. Now the final question is so how many bytes were deleted from this bucket? How many bytes were transferred out? So now going through a walkthrough, there are different ways to look at the bytes downloaded from an S3 bucket. Let's start by taking a look at billing. So if we go into billing and man, you guys are going to see my, my AWS bill details. All right, there you go. Yeah, I spend a ridiculous amount of money on my AWS bill every month. Cat out of the back. Anyways, if we go into billing and we go into the cost and usage reports, we can then go ahead and create a usage report. And this says you can download dynamically generated AWS usage reports that cover a single service. So I think this is going to help us identify usage reports relating to the S3 bucket that we realized data was stolen from. So let's go ahead and create a usage report. And we're going to choose S3 here because that's the service that we are interested in. Click that. And we're going to leave all the details for all usage types, all operations, the current billing period. I think that should be good. And then over and hourly uh, granularity. And then we can go ahead and download this. A CSV would probably be the best way to download that. Okay, that is taking its precious time. All right, looks like that was downloaded. And we can go in here and open that report. Now, this is the report that was created. And let me just adjust this view so that it's easy to see here. Now, unfortunately, I have not paid for Microsoft Excel in a while because I don't use it. So I'm limited on what I have access to here, like what I can do and stuff like that. So like now I actually think of it, I'm actually just going to upload this as a, a Google sheet and just like go through it instead. All right, perfect. So now I've imported all these details into these Google Sheets and yes a lot more functionality now that's probably not the best approach maybe i should have paid for microsoft but whatever whatever i made it work and we can just go ahead and oops we can actually just go ahead and just expand all these details so we see the different resources we see the usage type and then we see 
the operation associated with that. Now we want to sort the usage values. This is going to let us know the amount of bytes um, according to the operation and the resource. So let's go ahead and go here and then just like sort this. Let's go in here and then just do a sort, sort A to Z. Okay, now A to Z, sort Z to A. Okay, there we have it. So, okay, this might skew the results a little bit because I have my own resources in the environment, which is this Koala walks, uh, whatever, whatever. But I already know this is uh, these are my resources that I that I have in the environment during, like doing like a lot of login. So I'm gonna like, ignore that and just scroll down to the next best thing, which is the simulation bucket. And here we see 22, whatever this value is. But basically this is 22. Let's 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 separate it by commas and separate that by commas and then separate that by commas. So oh wow, that is two million two hundred and eighty thousand. Excuse me, this is two billion two hundred and eighty thousand nine hundred and sixty. Excuse me, I, I don't know what I'm saying. This is two billion two hundred and eighty million nine hundred and sixty thousand bytes. And we can see the usage of Operation is data transfer out bytes. We see that this is the bucket. We see the date as well. I think this is the start time and this is the end time. And if we scroll back further, we can see the actual API calls that was part of these data transfer activities. And we can see this is the get object API call. So this essentially signifies that the extradition activity, which is the get object API call, shows the amount of data that was extradited over this period of time. And then if we scroll down here, we can also see the delete object API call, and sh this shows another amount of data that was deleted from this same simulation O2 S3 bucket. Same thing for this one. It's like there was also a put object API call that it also was a significant amount of data in regards to this S3 bucket. So those different API calls, whether it was the get object, the put object, or the delete object, show a significant amount of data leaving this particular simulation S3 bucket. And that is quite obvious when we looked at those various Excel files and CSV files being downloaded from this particular bucket. Another way we can look at this exhortation activity is by looking at CloudWatch. Let's go back in here and oh, I'm actually going to close this and search for CloudWatch. CloudWatch. Go in here and within CloudWatch, you're going to look into the service dashboards and specifically the S3 service dashboard. And then we'll scope this to one week just because, because I think that was the time period when I actually ran the script for this simulation. Now, it does seem like that might have been a longer time period. So maybe I can stretch this out to three weeks. Maybe I think that's better. And the specific details we're, we're looking for is starting with the delete request sum graph. And we can see here, there's like a major amount of delete requests. This is like 75 delete requests here. And this basically indicates the total amount of requests that were made in, re in regards to object deletion within this AWS environment. Another part of the graph we can look at is the bytes downloaded. And these bytes downloaded essentially graphs the amount of data that was retrieved or downloaded from S3 buckets within your environment. And we can see here, there was a major surge here on this date right here, which I believe was the 1st of November when I initially ran the setup script and it's about 1.21 gigabytes of data that was downloaded during this time period. But that's essentially it. We've basically looked at different ways, essentially two ways by which we could explore data exfiltration from S3 buckets, whether it was using the Google Sheets, by getting that data from AWS Billing, or just using CloudWatch directly to look at bikes and activity, whether it was from the request or from bikes downloaded and everything like that. And it's really cool just kind of seeing like how these various AWS native tools can actually help you identify various things happening within your AWS cloud environment. Now we explored how we can analyze various indicators or using various AWS tools to look at a surge in activity when it comes to extra trading data from an S3 bucket or deleting data from the S3 bucket, whether it's through the Excel sheet or through the CloudWatch data. In the next and final video in this series, we'll be going over how to actually analyze some defense evasion tactics that the attacker took after performing all these different activities. Again, if you've not watched the first and second video, definitely check them out. They provide a lot of context into everything we've done so far. It will be very important when we're doing the final video. Also in the final video, we're going to be doing a cleanup of everything we've done so far by cleaning up the entire environment using the script that was provided in this workshop. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. This video is brought to you by my LinkedIn learning course. I've spent the last couple of years immersed in the world of cybersecurity, dedicating my career to detecting, responding, and building engineering solutions for threats against cloud environments, including ones for Fortune 500 companies and even some of your favorite tech and non-tech companies. From this invaluable experience, I have created comprehensive cloud forensics and incident response labs 
untrained platforms you're familiar with like Let's Defend and Blue Team Labs Online by Security Blue Team. And these labs were designed for individuals keen on learning how to detect and respond to cloud threats. But you know what? I felt like I could do way more. And that's why I'm excited to present to you my very first course on LinkedIn Learning, introducing my introduction to AWS Threat Detection course. In this course, you'll dive into the essentials needed to build and enhance your skills in AWS Threat Detection. Whether you're a SOC analyst, a cloud security engineer, a cloud engineer, a DevOps engineer, or a DevSecOps engineer, this course has got you covered with all the necessary knowledge that you need to kickstart your journey in AWS Threat Detection. So if that sounds exciting to you, make sure to click the link in this video's description or the pinned comments or the link in my bio to get started. I can't wait to see you in the course.